When the floods came to Queensland in December, they were massive, devastating and fatal. Eventually, in January, they went, breaking and taking everything, except the gutsy spirit of the people. We need some help and we're not equipped financially, resourcefully or emotionally at the moment to deal with it. On the other side of the country, there was an idea. Club sponsors came on board, the idea became fact and swans were flying. Some of them well out of their comfort zone. All the young boys that are on the plane, they're uh, a little bit nervous. You know, we've got 16 year old boys hanging around with XRFL stars like Ash Hansen and Adam Hunter, so they're nervous just naturally with hanging out with these AFL stars that are coming out of that system. So I look bit nervous about what's in store as well because some of these boys have uh, lived pretty charmed lives and what we're doing over the next four days is going to be easy. been allocated an area in Johnson Street in Sherwood. It's a uh, block of units and housing, residential housing that has been inundated with water. Water's subsided, they're in the bottom of a little gully. The drainage has been uh, completely blocked. There's a lot of mud and silt, no one's got in there. They can't get machinery, they can't get vehicles. And basically not a lot of people want to go into that area and help. So the residents of that area are very, very happy that we're coming in and they're loving Swan District Footy Club at the moment. Johnston Street is a typical street in a suburb that's typically Brisbane. Vero, uh, Treno, and Jason. Hunts, where are you? Yo! Hunts and Ash. The point of difference this week is mud and lots of it. It's the first of four days of hard labour for the boys from Bassendine. And while some of them might have expected wreckage and loss on such a scale, it's a fair bet none of them expected the reception they got from the locals. People who'd lost it all and could still smile and still give. At the start of day one we've got sort of dead fish in the street and all sorts of rubbish and the boys sort of don't know what to expect but they're getting in and pitching in really hard at the moment. It's pretty hot and humid and boys are starting to really sweat up and there's machinery going everywhere but uh, the boys are in good spirits at the moment mate and uh, hopefully after four days we're still in the same sort of spirits completely different to what we expected. That much mud and, you know, that much destruction, all the rubbish that came out of that house and, um, yeah, it's completely turned these people's lives upside down, I suppose. We kicked it off at uh, Wendy's house today. The water actually went probably 200 mils from top of the ceiling, so they actually uh, were pretty lucky they didn't lose the ceiling. A few of us boys went up top stairs uh, first. Um, they've only just renovated, so they pretty much lost everything there. They rang me last night and said, we've got some guys to come out, and they said, we've got footballers coming. I was like, oh, OK, that, that sounds really good. And we came in this morning, and there's just busloads and all these guys, and just everyone's really super friendly and stuff, and, and we're just completely overwhelmed with the generosity and, you know, the kindness, human spirit. It just is amazing. It's such a life-changing thing, what these people are going through, and uh, I just felt what we're doing, it's just never enough. Um, and when, when we were getting all food and stuff for lunch and I didn't, didn't feel like eating it because these guys have lost absolutely everything and, and we've, we've still got everything. Boy, are you popular. <laughs> Only repaying a kindness, that's oh, all. Hey. We've never had a greeting like this. Where's the oh. forward crew? Yeah. Thank you, Perth. No worries, thank you much. Uh, day two, been another early start. Things going well. The boys have got a bit of a routine and are pretty well organised now, so. I must admit, the garden was like a second priority for us because we were so worried about living in the house. Yeah, yeah. So having the garden done was like, oh my gosh, what a bonus. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. We did a lot of tree removal, which uh, there was a lot of debris filled in, 
and required the guys to do a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of lugging, a lot of chugging. They all did a sensational job and all of the comments today was that it was a really bloody hard day. It was a lot harder than yesterday for the simple fact that we did uh, nine houses today in one street and three houses in another. The boys had gone up the road, I don't know where they got it from, but they found this dirty big French penny bush and they just ripped it out and jammed it in the ground and you know, right in mud, happy birthday Wendy on it. When she came home she had another little cry and she was very emotional and uh, yeah, she said it was the best birthday present she could have ever wished for. Thanks for the opportunity, George, and good luck with the first show. Brett, Brett Warner from G'day, Brett. Hello, G'day, Brett, and you've got the mop, haven't yeah, you? Have Hello, G'day. Hey, it's fantastic of you. So how long do you think you'll be here? I will leave back on Thursday. What a great thing for you yeah. to have done. Congratulations, Sam. Uh, good luck for the season to come. On that first day in January, you have to wonder what the folk in Johnston Street made of this help from the West. Willing labourers, lads away from home and out for a lark, or a bunch of Chippendales who'd made a wrong turning. In the end, for the Swannies, Operation Johnston Street would be a lesson in human resilience. For the locals, their damaged piece of suburbia was made habitable. And Wendy got a new French of Panny for her birthday. It was a win-win situation, and as ever, a cliché says it best. <laughs> <laughs>